We're in a short series of tutorials in which I'm showing you how I use Logos Bible software for my weekly study, whether it's in sermon preparation or personal study or the content that I put out on YouTube. And uh, I've also been trying to highlight some of their new features. And so I'm showing you in this series the core functionality that makes Logos powerful for me, why it's invaluable for the work that I do, and then also trying to highlight some of the new things. And certainly that's the case today. I want to show you how to utilize collections. And I think it's really important to understand that Logos is really two things. Number one, it is the tool itself. So it is the tool in which you are able to search, in which you're able to organize things, find things. It has all sorts of uh, data sets that you can apply and that become really useful as you layer those resources on top of each other. It's a, it's a powerful tool they've developed, a piece of software. But the thing it also is, is a library. And this is, if you wrap your brain around this, you begin to realize the value. Without a library, the tool set is not that valuable. And the tool set is what makes the library so valuable. It gives you ways of interacting with the books that you own. I mean, any of us could go to Amazon and buy ebook versions and just have all of these books on our Kindle. But Logos Bible Software gives you the ability to really be able to access all of that library in more innovative ways than simply opening the next book. And collections is one of the ways in which I've been organizing books that I own specifically for the purpose of searching. If you come into my Logos Bible software, and let's do that and switch over, and if you were just to look at the library, I think just in my library, um, I've got a search going, so if I clear that out, yeah, I've got over 2,700 books in my Logos library. If I were to just search all those books, um, that could be really helpful. There's some books in here that I've bought that are really highly valuable to me. There's also general books that I've picked up along the way, some that came with old collections or libraries that were through Logos. Um, the truth is these books are of different value and sometimes there's certain kinds of books that I wanna search. If I were to come in and just do a generic search, for all of the books, uh, right now printing my, uh, looking in just my print library, but let's do my whole library. I've got a great tutorial on the print library if you're interested in that. But the truth is I'm now searching 2,700 books. In reality, I may get uh, a series of results that's just greater than, than I really am able to, to deal with. So let's say I was looking for something like a search on you know, Herod Antipas. We did this in one of our previous ones. Um, it is going to give me a, a lot of information from my books. So you can see, and I can scroll through. I mean, you know, look, if you notice the scroll bar, I mean, Herod Antipas's name is going to come up a lot. So for me to go through all of these, to, these in detail would take me quite a bit of time. What collections allow you to do is group certain kinds of books together that you think might be helpful for being able to run searches. So one of the other options I have here is instead of my books, I can actually come down to collections. And you'll see that right now I've got three collections that I've been working on. Background resources, so these are some of my favorite atlases and Bible dictionaries and specific books on backgrounds and culture. Uh, I also have references of ancient works. So this is a series of books that I have that are not the actual ancient works themselves, but books that connect rabbinic writings from the Second Temple period to specific verses from the New Testament. So it's a really helpful collection for me if I'm trying to dig in to where things may have been quoted. But then I actually have a Second Temple literature. I've been studying through the Gospel of Luke. So within this are things like the Mishnah and the Tosefta and the Talmud and Josephus and Philo and some of the other um, period writings, the Dead Sea Scrolls. And so if I want to look in the actual writings themselves, I have a whole collection for that. So again, I had this big long list of Herod Antipas. Let's say I just wanted to look at the, the background books that I've selected as a part of this background collection. Now you'll notice the scroll bar is much shorter. And so these are specific books that I've selected to be in this collection. The Lexham Bible Dictionary, Erdman's Bible Dictionary, um, Lexham's Geographical Commentary on the Gospels. So I'm starting to get to something much closer uh, that I can actually feasibly work my way through. If I did want to look, uh, where is Herod Antipas mentioned in Second Temple Period uh, literature, I can do that search. And you'll notice right off the bat, I'm into jo the works of Josephus. So several places he shows up in Josephus, which allows me to start digging into that that uh, background material, which for me in my studies is, is really, really important. Obviously a prominent figure, he's going to show up a lot in Josephus. But if I was searching something like um, circumcision, 
Sure enough, then I'm going to start getting quotations from the Talmud, from the Tosefta. So I'm getting into uh, specific rabbinic writings, so from the Jerusalem Talmud as well as the Babylonian. So a lot here I would be able to unpack uh, that's from those original sources. Now you can do this in all sorts of ways. It doesn't have to be the collections I've created. So what I want to do is I want to show you a few of the ways you can create these collections for yourself and use them instead of just searching everything you own, maybe searching like you would if you were going to go to your library, there might be a set of books you would pull out that are your go-to, you could certainly create a collection like that within Logos. So um, I'm going to come over here to Tools, and I've already started searching for it, but if you just search Collections, you'll notice that it comes up. And it gives you this panel. Uh, it's not fancy looking, but we can walk through it. So you have a couple of options. You can create a new collection, which is what I'm doing, or you could open one of your existing collections. So if you wanted to come in and add to your books, in this case, all my books from Second Temple period, I could. But in this case, let's go ahead and just click New. And then you could name uh, this collection. So let's say that I was going to name this uh, Books on Acts. We're getting ready to do an Acts study. So maybe I want in my custom layout in a previous tutorial we looked at, we picked my main commentaries. But maybe I want this to be a bigger group of all the commentaries that I would search together. So the next thing you can do is you can create a set of rules. And this is really interesting because you can actually put some pretty complex logic in here. So you could say, I want any book that starts with Acts. And you'll notice it's giving me a, uh, a sort of real-time filtering to say that based on this information I've put in, there are 79 books. If I left this alone right now, this would be the collection. So it would be all 79 of these books that it says fit within this criteria. But I can also use this to drag books into a uh, more specific one. So if I leave my search here, then I could start saying, well, this uh, acts for everyone I want to show up. So you'll see I'm just dragging these up into above. So perhaps, uh, well, this one looks like it's a preacher's outline. So maybe I don't want that one. Um, yeah, I like I mentioned I like Craig Keener's acts commentary series. So I'll bring it up in here. So you get the idea. We could build out, and again, you could come back and edit these and build a pretty pretty expanse, or maybe a pretty expanse library, or maybe you like all of these, but there's a few you don't want to include. You can specifically drag those up and drop those into the minus book section. The really important thing to do that um, the first time I didn't quite get is once you're done building the books you want, you want to clear out the search. Because again, this search will get saved and that will be the filter for the collection. But if you delete that search, now you'll notice the resulting collection is five books and they're only the five books that I added. So again, you can make really complex filtration systems, but the way I've been using it is I like to basically use collections as a way of just grabbing a group of books that I specifically want. So as long as you clear that out, make sure these are the five you really wanna see, then you should be good to go. You can simply just close that out. And now if I ever came back to do another search again, um, again, instead of Second Temple, I can come down and I have my Axe collection. And so if I were to search, it's just searching that collection. And the other thing that I think is helpful is I like to create shortcuts to these. You can actually save shortcuts to your collections. And I do this a lot because it's a really quick way to be able to jump to something. So I've opened up my uh, custom Axe layout and I've got these shortcuts over here. So for instance, if you wanted to look at some background material, if you wanted to look at something in te Second Temple period literature, I can open it up and you'll notice it's pre-opened a search field and it's opened it up specifically to that collection. So the one that I just clicked there, but we can easily save a shortcut so that if I'm in my Axe layout and I wanna just look at my larger Axe books, I can do that. So uh, I'm just gonna work right over the top of the one that's already open. So just search, I'm gonna have it search books. And this time I'm going to look at my collections, but I'm gonna choose the Axe collection. So if I search right now, it would pull up the information I was looking for in Axe. But what we want to do is we want to save this. So if we just come over here to this search icon that's in this tab, and if I drag it over, I can drop it anywhere within these shortcuts that I want. And you'll see it uh, auto-created search books in Axe. So that's the search that I've got. So if I close this, if I'm doing my Axe study in the future, and I, again, I've only got two commentaries open, but I want to search all those Axe books that I selected in that collection, I can just click and it'll open. And uh, we did a whole tutorial on how I really like the way AI is being implemented in Logos Bible software. That's also the case here. So if I, again, wanted to search um, in Acts, let's see, is Herod uh, Agrippa the first? If we wanted to search all of our Acts books, uh, I can literally just put a name in and a couple of things are going to happen. Now it's going to show me search results. But again, these are only from that collection of books that I created. But it's interesting because you'll actually get an AI-based answer. 
And if you notice the sources that are being used to create this AI answer, they're only those books that I put in this collection. So when we talked about AI, there's a whole tutorial on that you can go back and watch. But one of the things Logos is doing really well is they're giving you the ability to control where that artificial intelligence is drawing its answers from. And that's really the risk with AI is if it's scouring the internet, you don't know where it's getting its information. But now with a collection, you can put just the books you want into a collection and you can use Logos's AI tools, what they call their smart search, in order to generate those kind of synthesized answers just from those resources. What I like about it is you also get the sources. Um, very rarely, you know, maybe for something really quick, I'm trying to remind myself I'll use this synopsis, but it's a jumping off point. So I'm able to see, oh, well, there's something larger being written here in this particular commentary or in this article because it sourced it, and then I'll jump and begin to read that. But you see how these collections can become really powerful for giving you access to portions of your library instead of the whole. So that's my workflow. Um, I've been creating some of these and then I get rid of. I come in and I've been adding as I buy resources to some of the existing collections I have. But with the power of AI, and remember, Logos is both a tool and it's a tool you use to access a library, then collections allows you to really organize that library in a more usable way. One of the things I think happens for people when they get started with Logos Bible software is they feel overwhelmed. They put a search in and there's so many books. They're not sure some of the books even that they own within Logos because they bought a library. So going through and being able to select those books becomes a really helpful way. Uh, one other feature I'll show you that I think can be helpful is you can also, when those searches are being produced, you can actually rank those books. So in addition to having uh, Logos build cu custom collections, if you're looking at your overall library, one of the things you can do is come over to, and we'll look at this when we look at language tools in another tutorial, but if you right click prioritize books, uh, let me open my library again, you'll notice it's now open to prioritize books. You can actually go through your library and drag in the books that you want to prioritize. So I always recommend you do this with your Bible so that anytime you open a passage of scripture, it's going to open to the Bible you use. So search for the Bible you use and then drag it over like I've done here and put that Bible at the very top so that the anytime you open a scripture reference, it knows this is your most prioritized Bible. But you can do that with all sorts of resources, whether they're Greek dictionaries, Hebrew dictionaries, whether they're commentaries, background material. So again, to get to that, you just go to library, once you've clicked on library, click on the three dots, choose prioritize books. And this is something I'm often tweaking. I get new books or I start liking one particular book. I don't think you have to do it for your whole library, but as we get into uh, the language tools in particular, this is a feature that comes in really handy. Well, with that, I hope you're learning a lot about how you can use Logos to organize your library, maybe study a little more efficiently. If you've not tried Logos, I've got a whole article on why now might be the right time to try. And you'd be surprised how quickly you can start using tools like collections, even with a basic library, to really start doing some more intuitive, some more powerful searching into the books you have, especially if you pair it with a previous tutorial I did on adding print books to your library. You can include those as well, too. And so it becomes a really helpful tool for accessing the books you have in Logos, but even the books that are on your shelf. So if you haven't seen that tutorial, check it out. And I'm excited to come back and show you another tutorial on how I use the language tools of Logos Bible Software.